Back in 1983, Italian toy stores used a specially made cardboard display to show off Kenner's line of toys from Jabba's Palace. There's a short entry on the Star Wars Collector's Archive with some tiny photos of the display, but it's a little difficult to see what it actually looks like. Luckily, when that very same display went up for auction later on, we got some decent photos taken of it, and you can see right here what it actually looks like. And it's really quite extraordinary, I think. It's very colorful and appears to have been painted with watercolors, and overall it's a very unique looking design, especially for something meant to display Jabba's Palace figures. Of course, being made of cardboard, these weren't exactly made to last, and there weren't that many of them, I think, made in the first place. So it's possible that the one in this photo is the only surviving example, or maybe at best there's another one or two of these out there in somebody's attic. As I understand it, this sold for well over $10,000 at auction, so I had kind of written it off as being something I could never obtain. In 2012, the mystery about this item deepened a little bit when someone pointed me to an Italian eBay auction for a page out of Topolino magazine. The photo in the eBay auction was very difficult to see, but I went ahead and took a chance and ordered the page, and when it arrived, I could tell that it was, in fact, the same display, or actually a different version of it. Aside from the absolutely bizarre choices of figures that they've made to go in Jabba's Palace here and the one from the magazine, I mean, there's a wampa there, for God's sake. If we compare the two versions of the display, you can see there are quite a few differences. The actual design and artwork is completely different, the color scheme's different, and they didn't include the Rancor Pit grating there in front of the throne for the magazine version. According to Google Translate, the text on the display indicates that you can get a free Rancor Keeper figure if you buy five other figures, which was not an unusual promotion at the time. They had way too many Rancor Keepers lying around a little while after the movie was no longer quite as hot as it had once been, and they were trying to get rid of them. You can see the same idea was used in this Keep a Rancor Keeper Free ad uh, from Britain. But I'm not really sure what the story is, why they would make two nearly identical versions of the same display. It's, it's kind of mysterious to me. It could be that one was a prototype and the other was the one they actually used in stores, but I'm not entirely sure. But it seems that the actual gist of this ad was that they were running a contest in Topolino Magazine where kids could win all 61 of the Star Wars figures that were available at that time. Fast forward to 2018, and I was contacted by someone on my website, MightyJabba.com, who said that they were from Fine Art Movie Playset, and that they were going to be making an entirely new version of this vintage Italian display that I've been talking about, but instead of making it a full reproduction, which I think would be difficult without access to the original piece, they were going to be hiring an artist to kind of recreate it from scratch. Being a pretty big fan of that original display, I was quite interested until they said that it was going to be around $500 per piece. And at that point, I kind of wrote it off again because $500 for a cardboard display was just not in the cards for me. But I kept an eye on it in the intervening years, and at some point... They kind of went from the Fine Art Movie Playset account to uh, Lorene Topalian's account, which is the actual artist who did all the artwork for the set, and she started uh, selling them directly. And the price started coming down a little bit. I think maybe she realized that uh, it had been a little bit too high. And it finally got to the point where I was willing to make a purchase. So I'm going to show you what I got. This comes in an absolutely gigantic box. You can't really tell just from looking at it on the screen, but here's my hand. I had to move my camera all the way back here just to get it in frame. Here is a vintage Java, just for comparison. You can see how gigantic it is. Of course, it's relatively thin because it's really just containing some paper and cardboard. But uh, yeah, in terms of its overall size, it is quite gigantic. Maybe the second biggest box that I've had since I did the HasLab sail barge. So I just want to quickly open this up. You've got some tabs here. So inside you can see there are quite a few pieces of cardboard in various sizes and shapes and colors and things uh, that you're intended to take out and assemble yourself. So that's what I'm going to do off camera. But before we actually assemble it, I thought I would show you some of the stuff that it comes with in terms of paperwork. This is a certificate of authenticity, which just tells a little bit about the uh, playset display. Has some 
of the artist's artwork there. It's pretty nice stuff there. Has her signature and limited edition number six of 215, I believe that is. So, I mean, that sort of implies that they haven't sold a lot of these in the last several years, which honestly doesn't surprise me all that much. But, um, you know, this is <laughs> a very limited kind of thing, more so than even this 215 might indicate. The number of people who actually have these in their collection is, is quite limited at this point. Uh, so we have here a little uh, instruction booklet, I guess it is, showing you how to assemble it. So I'll be following this to assemble it. We've got a couple of cards with pictures of I guess her artwork there, and links to her Etsy shop, which I'll put in the description, of course. And we also have a little uh, art card, I guess, that she's thrown in with a colored version of that artwork. It's quite nice, suitable for framing, in my opinion. So, let's go ahead and put this together and see what it looks like. By the way, one thing I noticed when I was putting this together is that uh, she has actually signed and numbered all of the major cardboard pieces here. So there's this one and this one, and I believe the other ones are similarly signed. So that does make it kind of special. So the basic idea is you have these slots that you kind of poke out, they're perforated, and you can slot in the other sections like this. And in, in some places there is some uh, double-sided tape already applied to uh, make it a little bit more stable. One issue I ran into is that uh, this part here this is supposed to be the meat rotisserie behind Java's throne. Uh, on the instructions, it looks like it's supposed to be one piece that you, like, attach yourself. Mine, this is already glued on here, and it, I think it was just sort of hanging here by a small piece of paper. And some at some point, either when I was taking it out of the box or whatever, it got ripped off. So I'm going to have to uh, probably put some tape or something on here to fix that. And there was this piece, this was like this coming out of the box, kind of ripped. Should be relatively easy to make this look okay though, because we'll I'll just put a little white glue under here, fold it over and hold it, and uh, you know, let it dry. That should not be a big issue. So what I decided to do for this piece is just to cut a piece of thick paper, put it on the back, I'm gonna tape it here, and then also tape it on the underside of the uh, display here where it'll be hidden, and I think that'll reinforce it well enough. So I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but it's kind of still hanging a little bit strangely. So I'm gonna also use some glue right here at the join to kind of bring these two pieces together. So here we have the meat rotisserie after I repaired it. It is still sort of just hanging here, but uh, looks relatively okay. The join is not really noticeable, so not too upset about that. And over here, this is where there was a little tear, but it's basically not noticeable at all anymore, so not a big deal. So here is the finished display, and first of all, I will say it was a little bit tricky to put together. There were a few places where I sort of had to uh, use a tool of some sort to maybe open up the slots where the, the cardboard tabs were supposed to go in, or, uh, you know, minor things like that. It would be helpful probably to have two people to help you uh, to do this, but I was able to put it together and uh, didn't have any major issues aside from that little bit of damage that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I will say, and this is not coming across on camera at all, I can see, but it is gigantic. I had to push the camera way, way back further than I normally am. And I still, you know, if I if I reached maybe two and a half feet that way, I could finally touch it. But <laughs> right now, I can't touch it at all. It's just to give you an idea of how big this really is. Um, it, it's quite deep as well, so I had to kind of extend everything in my uh, photography area here. That does bring up the point of... Uh, you know, how are you going to display this thing? I am not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing with it, but um, it's something that you should probably keep in mind if you are interested in getting one of these. Uh, it will require a fairly extensive amount of space to display. But uh, before we 
look at this a little closer. I think we should really put the figures that it was intended to display on it, because of course in the uh, stores, it wasn't just something that you would look at on its own. The point was to display the Jabba's Palace figures from Kenner, and that's what I'm gonna do. So here is the display with all, or most anyway, of my Jabba's Palace related Kenner figures on it. And I think it looks really great, honestly. I really dig the style, the colorful uh, patterns here. You know, it's it's not at all what you would normally think of when you think of Jabba's Palace. You know, you sort of think of a sandy, monochromatic kind of look, I think. But uh, I really like it. Of course, I like, you know, rainbow patterns and watercolor and so forth. But uh, I think it looks really cool. Very distinctive, for sure. So if we look at how the playset is constructed, you can see that there's kind of multiple layers of cardboard. You have a, a very background layer and then several archways that kind of overlap to give it a feeling of depth that you might not ordinarily have in this kind of cardboard playset. And the same is true over here. You've got sort of a main archway here, but underneath that or, or beyond that, you've got quite a bit of room. I mean, you could fit a lot of figures in here. And then there's even another archway beyond that. So as I mentioned, this is quite large. It is about four feet wide by two feet deep. And if you look here in the back in particular, there's a large section where you can't really use it very well. There's no way to really display figures back there because you can't really see them. And in fact, I think the original display wasn't quite like this. If we compare a photo of my display with one of the ones from the Star Wars Collector's Archive, you can see that uh, it does appear to be different in the proportions. The new version is clearly bigger. But when I asked Ms. Tapelian about the kind of design process, she mentioned that she was concerned about allowing enough space for people to display all of their figures. So I guess that was what she gave priority to more than trying to make it exactly the same as the original display. In addition to the pieces that make up the main display itself, they've also included a large piece of cardboard with the text from that Rancor Keeper promotion that I mentioned from the kids' uh, magazine. And, you know, it's the, the alternative version of the display that had this on it. The thing is, there's no way to actually attach this to the display as they've designed it, uh, short of maybe attaching it with some double-sided tape. So it's really more of a bonus, I guess. So this is kind of an interesting item. In some ways, I am the perfect target audience for it because I'm a fanatical Jabba collector and I love Kenner uh, Star Wars, Kenner Jabba the Hutt in particular. So, honestly, I couldn't not buy it when it was, you know, finally a little bit more affordable. If you're interested in finding out more about this, I will put a link to Lorene's Etsy shop in the video description so you can see uh, what she has for sale, including this and some of the original artwork that was used to make it, and some other, you know, various kinds of fine art as well. A lot of cool stuff there. After I bought and received the piece, I contacted her and kind of explained who I was, and I was going to be making a YouTube video about it, and she offered a coupon code to my viewers for 15% off. The code is Jabba15, and I believe it'll work for not only this set, but also the original artwork that went into making it. So that's pretty cool. Now, I didn't get any kind of discount when I ordered this. She didn't know who I was, and, uh, you know, I'm not getting anything, any kind of kickback or anything at all. I just wanted to let people know if they're interested. So what do you think of this piece? Even at a reduced price, it's still a fair amount of money for cardboard, but I really like the way it looks with all of the figures displayed on it. By the way, if you have any information about the original displays from Italy, if you ever saw one as a kid, for example, or anything like that, I'd be interested to know. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. This video was brought to you with the help of my patron supporters, including these Palace VIPs, and most especially, Angelica Brady. Thanks very much for your support. If you'd like to know more about how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month, click the link in the video description.